hello friends uh, now uh, in your in our previous class i had explained you about the hyperpituitarism due to growth hormone in the endocrine system um, so let us go to the second hormone which is synthesized by the pituitary gland and uh, its action so the second hormone is acth which is adrenocorticotropic hormone so what happens if there is increased secretion of adrenocorticotropic hormone so this leads to cushing syndrome i hope you all have learned something about cushing syndrome in your uh, uh, primary classes so this cushing syndrome is mainly caused due to increased acth secretion by the pituitary this cushing syndrome is not only due to increased acth by the pituitary but it, it is also due to increased cortisol production uh, so we are going to deal this cushing syndrome in our next class uh, in our forthcoming classes where we will deal about adrenal gland right so uh, just keep this uh, cushing syndrome aside uh, so the fourth the, the third hormone which is secreted by the pituitary gland is prolactin so the third uh, hormone is prolactin this prolactin will lead to a sin a problem which is hyper prolactinemia in hyper prolactinemia prolactinemia there is increased production of prolactin but why there are some conditions like adenomas which increase the direct secretion of prolactin from the pituitary so this is one condition and the second one is there is a problem i mean there my there uh, not a for the prolactin to produce i mean whenever prolactin is produced only whenever there is a need so oh, whenever we don't need this prolactin this prolactin production is inhibited by prolactin inhibiting factor of hypothalamus which is present which is a dopamine factor like uh, you know for increase for prolactin secretion prolactin a uh, release inhibiting factor of hypothalamus is necessary what is this prolactin release inhibiting factor this inhibits secretion of prolactin and this is mainly a dopamine so what happens is uh, uh, there there might be some tumors which will compress the pituitary stack compress pituitary stack uh, this compression this prevents the flow of prolactin this prevents the flow of prolactin release inhibiting factor this uh, to say this prevents the flow of dopamine so there is there is no inhibition to the prolactin so whenever there is no inhibition to the prolactin there is increased secretion of prolactin right this is a second mechanism by which there is increased production of prolactin and the third pro problem is hyperthyroidism sorry hypo hypothyroidism whenever there is hypothyroidism that to very severe hypothyroidism then there will be incre slight increase in prolactin because hypothyroidism like thyroid and prolactin are inversely related so whenever there is decrease the thyroid there is increased production of prolactin uh, so when they, but this happens only when there when the uh, this proportion is really very adverse like whenever there is severe hypothyroidism then there is increased the secretion of prolactin 
and the fourth is due to cirrhosis of liver even in the cirrhosis of liver there is increased prolactin because of some growth factors which will be secreted in the cirrhosis of liver and even uh, uh, the uh, in the cirrhosis of liver there is no metabolism of many enzymes and many uh, stuff which are present in our body this, this might also be a reason so the main pathogenesis of hyperprolactinemia are mainly of four types one is due to adenoma and the second is due to some tumors which compresses the pituitary stalk and prevents this uh, inhibiting factor which is dopamine and thus there is no inhibition of prolactin and there is increased secretion of prolactin and the third one is hypothyroidism that too whenever there is severe this may also lead to increased prolactin and the fourth one is cirrhosis of liver which again leads to increased prolactin and finally the lesions what are the lesions which you are going to see right now uh, in this here uh, the main here there is very little abnormality so what happens when so let's think there is increased prolactin till now so what happens if there is increased prolactin increased prolactin basically inhibits a release of luteinizing hormone releasing factor by hypothalamus this is luteinizing hormone releasing factor or releasing peptide by hypothalamus so this will decrease secretions of gonadotropin so this decreased secretion of gonadotropin leads to increased i'm sorry there is decreased gonadotropin that is mainly lh mainly lh and fsh so whenever there is decreased gonadotropin decreased ovarian activity there will be decreased testicular activity right this leads to amenorrhea or and infertility whenever there is decreased testicular activity this leads to libido that to decrease the libido impotence that is decreased sperm count and no sperm count and no fertilization infertility and this prolactin increased prolactin also le- act- activates breast tissue direct growth directly so this is one of the way that prolactin works and the other way is uh, oh yeah this is the main mechanism of prolactin mainly whenever there is increased prolactin what happens is there is inhibition of uh, um, lhrf this is because of negative feedback mechanism because whenever there is decreased prolactin uh, whenever we need prolactin basically lh stimulates the growth of pro- i mean secretion of prolactin so whenever there is uh, uh, increased prolactin so that secretion is inhibited so there is decreased gonadotropin and decreased ovarian activity and decreased testicular activity so what are the clinical features which you are going to see or visualize in hyperprolactinemia the main clinical features which you are going to visualize in hyperprolactinemia are one is as you can see amenorrhea right so this is secondary amenorrhea and there is uh, impotence as i have said and there is uh, um mainly hypogonadism because decreased activity of uh, testicles and ovary so it is hypogonadism and then uh there will be in mid bill production uh which is variable especially in pregnant women with variable concentration and quantity and there will be decreased libido decreased impo- i mean importance all this which i have said and there will be galactorrhea 
which is milk production and there will be enlarged breasts all these are the main clinical features which you can see in uh, hyperprolactinemia and there are some additional features like uh, pathogenesis to say of hyperprolactinemia so let us discuss the pathogenesis uh, by division basically so when i mean all these are the probable which i have said so let's uh, talk about pathogenesis in a little more detail it's basically chart which i would like to give you of all the possible prob uh, pathogens i mean etiological factors which i would like to discuss i think this should be the first one but because uh, i forgot i am writing it right now so it is of mainly uh, three types uh, one is physiological which is seen mainly in uh, um, uh, pregnant women and the other is dopamine antagonists whenever or drug induced to say and the third one is pathological so first physiological so what are the things which you will mainly see in physiological thing one is stress all these are etiologies to say instead of pathogenesis it's better to, to call it as etiology which may lead to hyperpituitarism stress pregnancy lactation sleep coitus exercise baby crying nipple stimulation all these are the physiological factors all these are mainly taken from the book uh, harris uh, davidson of medicine it's better if you re uh, remember these in a better way so th this drug induced in mainly because dopamine which is naturally a prolactin inhibiting factor this dopamine is used in many drugs which are used in present day so those include dopamine antagonists many dopamine antagonists and dopamine uh, depleting drugs like those which uh, inhibit dopamine and finally estrogens i really don't wanted to describe you the examples of all this because it would be better if you learn all these in uh, pharmacology so the in pathological it may be common and common are rare what are commonest one the commonest one is uh, prolactinoma which is basically an uh, microadenoma that is a tumor of pituitary uh, pro, main, a tumor of pituitary mainly prolactin cells so it is microadenoma as i have said due to some disconnection or uh, some tumor on the uh, uh, stack and the other one is hypothyroidism and next it is polycystic ovarian syndrome and the uncommon ones include hypothalamic disease or renal failure and the rarest ones are chest wall reflexes so all these are the etiological factors which are seen in hyperpituitarism so hyper i mean hyperprolactinemia so what did we learn hyperprolactinemia first we learned about pathogenesis and lesions and finally etiological factors though etiological factors should be first 
but this time I miss next from next I'll keep them in the first so this is what we are going to learn in these and the next one I mean like right now we have completed about uh, mainly growth hormone in the growth hormone we read about gigantism acromegaly and then about ACTH and Cushing syndrome which we are going to deal it in the next class and about prolactin we completed hyperprolactinemia so right now next we'll deal with the, okay fine TSH pink pink young yeah. fifth it is TSH which is thyroid stimulating hormone whenever there is increased thyroid stimulating hormone increased TSH sorry increased TSH this activates thyroid gland which leads to increased T3 and T4 which leads to hyperthyroidism right so increased TSH basically doesn't lead to any disease but it mainly leads to hyperthyroidism the manifestations and the things which we are going to deal in hyperthyroidism will be dealt in the next forthcoming classes so the sixth one is increased FSH and LH Yes, the sixth hormones are FSH and LH whenever there is increased mainly FSH and LH increased FSH and LH it may be due to tumors basically and this in women uh, in women it is normal though there is increased it doesn't have much effect then they'll be normal but if it is in child it leads to hyper gonadotropinemia hyper is increased gonadotropin amia is again, again in the blood amia means mainly so hyper gonadotropinemia uh, in the in increased gonadotropins in the blood which leads to precocious puberty and then in male it mainly leads to gynecomastia that is increased production of breasts because increased LH secretes increased I mean activates secretion of prolactin which leads to increased production of breast tissue which leads to gynecomastia all these are the hormones which are mainly produced by the anterior pituitary <coughs> so right now we have dealt with the hormones pro produced by the pituitary gland uh, in the from the anterior lobe so there will be gigantism, acromegaly and then there will be ACTH, prolactin and then TSH and FSH. So in the next class we will deal about the hyperpituitarism which is seen due to uh, posterior pituitary uh, gland. Okay then bye. If you have any doubts or if you have, uh, I mean, just comment on the, uh, on my teaching methodology and teaching way so that I can improve my teaching in the next class. Okay, bye.